Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Kaiser Redux in which we're playing as New York City. But I've already played them once at the time of this recording. I played as Mayor F Fiorello H. Lagardia, so we're not going to play as him again. But if you'd like to read about snap elections for the mayor of New York City, please go right ahead. But for right now, we're going to go with a certain Trump and his conservative market-oriented reform party steal a surprise win. So now we're social liberals. If you want to read about this focus, please go right ahead as well. I've read it before, so... I don't need to read it again, but if you'd like to read it, you can always pause the video, and of course the sudden election as well, which we just finished, and there you go, but elect Trump. Define the odds of beating expectations, Frederick Christ Trump, is that really his middle name? And his reform party has snatched victory from the jaws of certain defeat, become the 100th mayor of New York City. Spinning in the face of his former allies in Tamami Hall, Trump's reform party garnered support and funding from the city's large conservative minority and its elite, as well as from the old Democratic Party from the deep old South. Though he's been fighting allegations of ties and sympathies to the Triple K, Trump has floated above the worst controversies and now poised to bring about a free market capitalistic revolution to the stagnating, rotting Big Apple, seeking to rebuild New York City's reputation as the greatest and most prosperous city on earth. Embrace social conservatism. Oh, more slightly better daily political power. Sweeping privatization. You get more political power, you lose supply consumption, which isn't very good. And you get more max factors in the state and make New York great again. Let's go with that one first. Chan as MNYGA by his adoring supporters make, Mer make <coughs> New York great again. He has become the unofficial slogan of the Trump administration. Centered around the idea of returning to New York's illustrious and booming past, Trump seeks to re-roll back progressive policies and failed welfare legislation that have only served, served to drain the lifeblood from the city and its people while replacing them with financial stimuli plans and tax breaks. Another manager in order to breathe life into the faltering economy of the Big Apple. Additionally, Mayor Trump has pushed to stem the flow of immigrants and refugees from the Civil War, seeking to return to the town before New York City was plagued by these corrosive parasites. By rolling back the clock with new and modern policies, Trump shall make the city that never sleeps jump back into the electric limelight of its past so that we can have a broader, more prosperous future. Look at that smile. A captain of industry, if I ever saw one. Also, the American Civil War is raging on and they're killing each other, but what else is new? Um, actually, the American Union State already capitulated, not capitulated, but took over to D.C., which is kind of insane. So, I'm not... Where's their capital? If they lose D.C. immediately... I think there's Mexico, too. But I, I I don't know where the capital is. Alaska's free right now. I'm very surprised they haven't actually capitulated. Maybe they need to take up Richmond as well, maybe? But, regardless. Rudolph Catholic Influence NYPD. Ooh. Organized crime problem. With, crime problem. If you're wondering about the Shining Star of the military, please go right ahead. Ooh. Weekly stability gain. Ooh. Social conservatism goes down. To Mamie Hall denounces us. If you want to bet that as well, please go ahead too. We get Frank Sinatra. Thank you. Um, that's not bad. Let's do Rudolph Catholic influence of the NYPD. Convinced that the NYPD is infected by the machinations and meddling of the Catholic Church, Mayor Trump has begun a campaign to med or, or to reform the New York Police Department from the ground up. Seeking to eradicate the monopoly on power Irish Catholics have held over the city for decades. All Catholic cops who refuse to renounce their religious identity while on the job shall be forced to be fired or re be replaced by proud and trustworthy officers from godly and good Protestant families. Furthermore, all plans to desegregate the forces have been put on hold indefinitely as the new and sweeping reform measures are underway. Though, through legislation to bid a strong army and deceit, the NYPD shall be cleansed, made sure, and made pure, so that our defense force can truly be trusted to provide unbiased protection to true, true New Yorkers. And the Treaty of Baradia, huh? Or Baradia. Cool. And in any case, we do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm. Five days left for that, and... Oh, deal with him. Oh. Well, I guess we gotta deal with him. Future of the, uh, New York's administrative divisions. If you want to read about this, please go ahead. Uh, states. About a unitary system. We'll go with that one. You know what? Let's do this one just in case first. Trump's own Reform Party is itself a splinter from the society of St. Tammany, composed of disillusioned Democrats and conservative capitalists who have grown tired of domineering Irish Catholics and their self serving ambitions. Now, free from Tammany and solidified. Solidly in charge over them, Mayor Trump has moved to finally free the city and himself from the greedy clutches. The site of St. Tammany shall be banned and dismantled for our New York has no room for corrupt and archaic political machines such as these. Huzzah! And revive the gos gospel? Global business capital. Actually, slash taxes sounds like fun too. Um, Alright, so we read that one. That's a good more weekly stability. Revive the global business capital. New York City is once the financial capital of the world, a booming center of non-stop business fitting of the name of the city that never sleeps. However, after the sparking of the new civil war and after two global economic collapses, this legacy has been left in the dust. Mayor Trump seeks to revive this legacy, utilizing new market reforms and industrial expansion in order to breathe new life into this old storied city. Under his guidance, New York City shall reclaim its legacy as the foremost center of the global finance and capital 
once more. A dry New York City seeking to fulfill a campaign promise to his elitist and conservative Protestant voter base while also staying in line with his own personal teetotaler lifestyle. Mayor Fred Trump and his Reform Party have pushed to introduce prohibition into the Big Apple. Though prohibition failed to pass on the national level before the outbreak of the Second American Civil War, did pass in some states and uh, counties, and the memory of such an idea has not gone out peacefully. The Trump administration has introduced this new dry bill to the Senate, and Trump, uh, and now the wider government of the Big Apple is currently voting on its outcome. Though many view this to be a good, moral, and pious cause that will better the moral fiber of New York City while alleviating some of the society's drug ailments, many others believe that this would be an infringement on personal liberties and freedoms inherent on being part of the old union. Furthermore, the mob and other criminal outfits have viscer viscerally opposed this bill, seeing it as an attack on their enterprise, while others simply see this as being bad for the economy. However, Trump is certain that alcohol not only breeds crime, but also corruption and laziness, especially among the Irish and within the Catholic-dominated NYPD. What shall the fate of the decisive bill be? It passes. We lose a lot of stability. New York City remain remain uh, is to remain a hive of scum and alcoholism. You lose a lot of stability, but look at all that political power you get. Push back to prohibition. And despite the passing of the dry bill, which is a tremendous political win for the Trump administration, all is not well in the Big Apple. With the entire industry being banned overnight, our economy is taking a mass fit as hundreds of vineyards, breweries, distilleries, and bars closed down across New York City and Long Island. Furthermore, the mob and other criminal outfits have been furious over this decision, but have taken back to a life of bootlegging and rum running in order to capitalize on a new opportunity. With riots and crime rising across the nation, something must be done by the Trump administration in order to address these issues, for if he wishes for New York City to become a dry state, he's going to have to fight for it. Repeal the bill at once? That alcohol flow in here? God guides us to know what is best. The bill says just hire more cops. The pains of withdrawal. Okay. Well, okay. Embrace social conservatism. Despite his liberal economic policies and proclivity towards free market reforms, Mayor Trump is a stalwart champion of Protestant conservatism. Rooted in the Christian upbringing and strict and independent childhood, and ties to groups like the ODPK and the Triple K, Mayor Trump is keen on reforming New York City from a hedonistic and sinful heap of liberal excess into a paragon of white Anglo Saxon Protestant virtue. Though secular Christian morals still form the basis of Mayor Trump's beliefs, and these beliefs that will create safe, secure, and prosperous New York. And if you want to read about the uh, Long Island siege, please go right ahead. So. Be quick, boys. I miss the Cody dogs already. But after this one, his housing act, stability wouldn't be bad. Let's do New York economic or New York free economic zone. In order to promote both his domestic and foreign business, Mayor Trump has moved forward with his plan to transform New York City into an inviting hotspot for global trade. Creating a free economic zone encompassing the entirety of the city, Mayor, Trump, Mayor Trump's New York, New York City Fez shall create a tax free market or area for most industries, while certain key industries will have some small tariffs as a necessity to break even on running costs in order to encourage economic activity. With this move, our Big Apple shall rise and become the greatest free port in the world, drawing business from around the globe to our docks and shores. Oh, that'll make a lot of people happy, hopefully. At least that's the goal. Ah, oh, sorry about you. Because we got, we got big ambitions, big goals here. And actually for you, we probably want to go with Ambusher. Uh, the Mask Morons, if you want to know about that, please go right ahead. Oh, look at that happy laughing face. Oh, oh! Look at hungry. Goodbye, hungry. Cape Crusaders. Oh boy. Embrace social conservatism. So with our path, we're currently literal market liberals. We're not social liberals. We're market liberals. We were social liberals under Lagardia, but social li market liberals. Money, 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 money. And then with that route, of course we're going to go down here eventually. Set an election. Up, buddy up to Berlin. Overture to Ottawa. Beyond the city limits. Uh, free, independent, safe New York. Intervene in the Civil War. We could go this way too. City under siege? Cool. And we can only get 0.5 political power. Okay. Wow. With Fred Trump, we get, we lose a lot of political power, but whatever. All right. And the Housing Act? Sweeping privatization would not be bad either. Uh, what is this one? Privately funded infrastructure expansion. More daily political power costs, but a piece of the pie. With New York City now settling into the realities of independence, although to many it still comes as something of a shock, Mayor Trump has seen fit to begin building bridges between the citizens of the city and Long Island. Long. Uh, island. Her elite, first and foremost, has long viewed that Big Apple as something of a blight on her freedom and lives, viewing the city as hoarding and controlling political power over their heads. With independence, this move towards shifted from the mild annoyance to downright hatred, even to the point where a few militias were formed to fight any attempts by the city to impose its order on the rest of the island. Thankfully, however, these militias have since folded since Mayor Trump's election. Far from wanting to impose the city's culture on them, Trump has done has done the opposite. Trump has seemed to become keeping attempts by forces within the city to impose law within Long Island at Bay, electing to empower local authorities instead. Along with his decentralization, Trump has been cutting deals and, in some cases, actually bankrolling the various elites at Dot Long Island, be it promises of special tax treatment, a blind eye to poor working conditions, or donations to cheers that have that links too. Trump has done much to win the Long Island elites over to his side. Business aside, many of these elites, the Rockefellers being the largest, are quite supportive of Trump and his reform party. 
In a gesture of friendship, approval from his of his administration and his thanks for support, Jump has been gifted a large portion of the Deep Hollow Ranch, the oldest cattle ranch of the former U.S., which Jump has graciously accepted. Nima's new tramp simply, or ranch, simply, Trump Ranch. Expected that Trump brand steaks, hamburgers, and other such items will hit store shelves as soon as next year. All in all, the people of Long Island can't sleep a little sun and know that the city truly cares and understands their needs. Trump knew, truly knows the art of the deal. Nice. Very cool. And, of course, the Housing Act. But then again, I do want to get this done, too. Civil and construction speed. Less supply consumption. We lose some more political power, but whatever. Um, hmm, let's keep going this way. Here's the Housing Act. So he can eradicate the homelessness and unemployment epidemics while also making a quick buck for himself and his economic partners. Mayor Trump has appended a few new housing acts aimed at creating affordable housing for the masses of the Big Apple. Those well, administration and past business dealings have been plagued by accusations that Trump's companies favor white citizens over blacks and other minorities. Mayor Trump has assured his constituents that this is merely slander. And there's new act. The jobs and the willing homeless will be tasked with building new homes uh, under the banner of both city offices and private companies working in unison once built. They can then come to rent or buy these apartments for themselves while others shall be set up as state-operated halfway houses, hopefully fixing two crises with one move and improving the public image of Trump along the way. In which we lose 10 more political power, but we get 5% more stability, which would be nice. Oh, they learn interim republic, huh? And get two infrastructure, which is really nice as well. Whole fat ten days left, huh? That sucks. Oh, look at this. Embrace social conservatism. How's the world doing over here? Oh. Oh wow. Oh, it is in the donut. Ed oh, Giuseppe the first. Okay. I played. Have I played the Kingdom of Italy? It Kingdom of Italy. Play as A and I before in Kaiser Redux. Kaiser Rike, I mean. I should play as these guys again. Kingdom of Italy, huh? That's really cool, actually. That's not too weak when you have uh, Italy here as well. Alright, a housing act. For the poor. We're doing this for the poor, my friends. Oh, there's Verona here as well. Oh, Venice. But slash tax. Though the NYC FES has been an initial success, Mayor Trump still believes he can do more to breathe life into the economy. Going beyond the tax free haven allotted to the big businesses and foreign companies, Mayor Trump has gone ahead with a slew of tax cuts aimed at the regular citizenry of the city. For the working class or the elite, all groups have experienced tax cuts and record breaking amounts, which the Trump administration swears will be made up for in the increasing revenue and profits. Such a move naturally reads. With these moves, New York City will be the preferred tax haven in the wider world, inviting business and immigration from only the most favorable and profitable clientele. Uh, in order to put the corrupted tiger of Tamami Hall out of its misery once and for all, Mayor Fred Trump has launched a full-scale investigation of the Society of St. Tamami and their numerous misdeeds. Facing corruption and felonious charges in a list too long to fully detail, the specially assembled team of prosecutors has their sights set directly on the heart of Tamami Tiger, seeking to end this corrupt monstrosity's reign of terror finally. Let's embark and take down those wrong structures so that New Yorker society can finally breathe free. I should po poach this tiger once and for all. Oh, you betcha. Uh, let's go to early mobilization. Nice. I got plays earlier sometimes as well. But after that one, um, sweeping privatization. In order to undo the damage by the foolish and short sighted administration before his, Mayor Trump has called for sweeping privatization measures to be taken across the city. All major economic sectors in the subways and the sewers, the shipping lanes, and consumer goods industry shall be made private, broken into small entities, and sold piecemeal to both uh, corporations and the wider public. The heir of nationalized New York City is now dead. Let privatization prosperity reign free, and privately funded infrastructure expansion, tap on the shoulders of his friends in high places, will also open in the field of new private business that have flourished since his election. Mayor Trump has introduced his plan to massively expand and modernize the infrastructure of the Big Apple using private funds and firms to do the work. This shall function both as a grand test for his new private, newly privatized New York City, as well as the first steps towards his plan of totally modernizing and privatizing every aspect of the city that never sleeps. With this plan, new sewers, subways, parkways, highways, bus routes, ferry lines, telecommunications networks, and more shall be refitted, modernized, and expanded, all using private funds and private workforces. The city finally acclimates to the new dry era. After months of chaos and violence, crime and sin, the Big Apple has finally gotten used to Trump's Prohibition Bill. Though speakeasies and bootlegging are still around, they are far rarer than they were when the Prohibition first started. And with the mob finally put back in its place by the newly expanded NYPD, the city that never sleeps is finally dry and safe. Now we should look to the future free of sin and drunkenness. Under God and eager to start off on our reforged destiny. Finally, the city that never sleeps can finally rest. 
Repair in the garden. Madison Square Gua Garden, frequently called MSG or just the garden, is the greatest sports arena in America and perhaps the world. Currently the third building to bear the name. The current garden was built in 25 and has served as the home of the New York Rangers ice hockey team and the New York Knicks base basketball team for years. However, the garden along with other great venues like Yankee Stadium were damaged during the battle for New York and as such they've been closed for waiting for repairs. Using funding sourced from our new economic boom, Mayor Fred Trump has authorized local contractors to repair the great stadium so that New Yorkers can once again enjoy professional sports on the greatest arena on earth. As the same as a repair, new leagues are to be organized and new teams are to be made for all locally popular sports like hockey, baseball, basketball, so that the next regular season can go off without hitch. Praise be the world's most famous arena, the Dewey Hearings. Utilizing the famous Escal prosecutor Thomas E. Dewey along with the crack legal team, Mayor Fred Trump's launched what is being called the Dewey Hearings in an attempt to expose and eradicate organized crime within the Big Apple once for all. Singling out Lucky Luciano and his National Crime Syndicate along with the five families under his control, the prosecution has all the evidence in the world they need to deal with a major blow to mobster activity in New York City, with the chaos of the battle for New York and her independence revealing much of their more shady dealings. Luckily for us, her numbers are not as unified as first seemed, and numerous informants and term coaches such as Joseph Valachi have come forward, making her case stronger, but... Much of the jury could easily be paid out by the mob, so we must remain vigilant as we go after these kings of crime after weeks of trials and debate. With the interesting tidbits leaking that both Tammany Hall and parts of the NYPD have been corrupted by the criminal syndicate, they finally found that the mobsters are guilty. Book them and hang them. Mob gets out with a slap on the wrist. Book and hang them and the Great Wall. There have been many suggestions as to how to defend a glorious city, from sea mining to the bay to building forts all along the coast. One of the most radical proposals, however, being both suggested and backed by real estate... Uh, Mogul and Mayor Fred Trump. It is a suggestion that we should begin the construction of a great wall along the borders of the city, separating the violence and conflict of the federal forces and cynicalist militias from the glittering lights and uh, stable streets of New York. This would naturally be an expensive effort, and many are decrying it as a stunt for attention, arguing that a solid wall will be absolutely hopeless at stopping a sustained artillery bombardment or armored advance, alongside the obvious question of who is going to pay for the effort. Trump has insisted, however, that the city's budget can afford it, and that it created a vast amount of jobs for the huddled masses. Whether he truly cares for the people he who could be employed under a scheme is unclear, but he has so far refused to back down on pushing this great wall project, swearing is the only way to preserve New York's hard-fought independence and stability. Huh, I wonder where that image is from. <laughs> I suppose there's room for a budget for such an expense. Build the wall. Is Trump going to pay for it? Deny Trump his wall for he having the funds. We're going to build the wall up a prosperous New York City. Flying in the face of his doubters and detractors, Mayor Fred Trump has ushered in a new golden age of profit and prosperity for New York City and its people. Our shiny big apple has become gilded and glittered with gold like never before as its financial renaissance breathes new life into our one shaken metropolis. Financial ruin, bankruptcy, and the allegations of bad business are but a thing of the past now for Mayor Trump has proven all that is right, his way is the right way to make New York great like never before. Um, if you want to read about the Battle of the Bronx expand, please go right ahead. Let's go Jaspers. Nice. 1938, my friends, of course. And America is going all funky funky on itself, still killing itself. But what else new? The Pacific State's doing really well. I feel bad for Huey Long, but not. Radical Socialist. Who the heck is Colbert Olson? Oh. Huh. Oh, Charles Lindbergh. That's cool. Card's doing. Oh. oh. The Black Revolt already spawned earlier. And Big Bill Haywood. Huey Long Dong. Are the, the feds are dead. Are they? No, they're not. The feds are. When they lose DC. How do they hold on? Is that cheating? Do they have to lose every tile? They might have to lose every tile, actually. Um, Fighting for America. Supply grace. No, nothing there. Rising star of the New Democrats. If you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Yeah, no. I don't see anything here that allows them to stay alive if they lose their capital, but whatever. Maybe it's somewhere else. War profiteering. Ooh. Encourage charity. I, like, I prefer war profiteering. Despite a golden reality here in the Big Apple, same cannot be said for the rest of our former countrymen all across America. <clears throat> Violence and chaos reign supreme, and the same shall soon be true for the rest of the world as a global hegemon steer towards war. However, such chaotic reality only breeds new opportunities for a metropolis, and as such, Mayor Trump is a plan. We shall tap into the heckish and bloody industry that is war, so we may profit while others squander and bicker like fools atop the ashes of the old world order. We shall build a prosperous and golden financial empire like the one which the world has never seen, for there's only one truth. War is a racket. Huh. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And they're still struggling over here, but they're doing better, definitely. Bulgaria is dying, and Sublime Ottoman Federation is having a time. Oh. Some balding guy in FAI. Okay. And China is a mess. I gotta play as Mongolia again sometime. They're a lot of fun. Oh, look at this guy. The Mad Baron. I don't know which way I went. I think I played as him before, but... I should play, I should play as Tibet, too. Oh, look at this guy. I've never seen this guy. Yosef B. Yugoshel. Yeah. Nicknamed Soso as a child. Oh, look at that. Collective farming, huh? 
People's Guard of Georgia. Wow, a lot of 30% recovery rate. Enforce wealth redistribution. Trump Southern support base. So look at this guy, handsome guy. I once arrested at a Klan rally in Queens in 1927 while in full Klan robes in what would become a major media of circus and black scene in his career in New York politics. Fred Trump has long tried to hide the nature of his ties to the Dixtrats of the ODP. Oh, Georgian Trumpism, and the KKK. Despite its efforts, rumors and slander run rampant through the ranks of his rivals and detractors about these benefactors of Mayor Trump, though he has time and time again preached that he was only involved in the Klan due to the staunch anti-Catholic stance. Himself, being a devout Protestant, has and since cut all ties with their organization. But what happens beyond closed doors is unknown, and since taking office, the Trump administration has made numerous friendly overtures to the constitutional states of America to the South, with delegates from the ODP visiting City Hall shortly after his inauguration. Who brought along with them several high-ranking members of the northern branches of the Triple K, such as a large branch active in Maine? There's a branch in Maine? With appearances like these, the rumors against Mayor Trump are also sure to continue. But remains adamant that he wiped his hands clean of these bigots. Whatever whatever either side may say, the facts do not lie. Trump definitely holds ties to the South. It's just a matter of how deep they run. And they can overcome far more dominant ambition of bringing prosperity and greatness to the city that never sleeps. All said, I've done more for black people than anyone in this city. <laughs> Georgian socialism. This looks like fun. Defense of the mobile line, wow. Economic crap, well, of course. They're a bunch of syndicalists. Oh, actually, are they totalists? What are they? Socialists? Totalists, yeah. Azerbaijan. The fate of the Christian front. Um, maybe remember this one, please go right ahead. Yeah. The schnozzle. If you remember about Mr. Big Nose, please go right ahead. Ban the organization. And arrest its leadership. Uphold our principles no matter what the case. Yeah, we'll do that one. War profiteering, war is a racket. But at the same time, uh, we're going to come over to here and choose artillery. And then we'll go with encourage charity. We can be the richest beings in the world, but that would not change the reality that there are those who are less fortunate than we, for not all can, can be the financial geniuses that we are. In order to fulfill our Christian duty while also earning some tax breaks and a ticket in heaven along the way, Mayor Trump has encouraged and incentivized charitable acts like never before. All those within the state who make us over a certain amount will be forced by law to give a small percentage of charity in lieu of taxes and other payments that they'd like to make to the state and other lesser systems. Our economies are already supported by their business, and so now the poor and don trodden should be supported by their ex excess. All for the good of the city and our souls. Encourage charity. State mandated encouraged charity. Now, I've got all these, and I've read all these before, so this stuff doesn't really mean too much, and I'm just going to blow through these quite a bit because it doesn't really matter too much. Um, well, this stuff is going to be a little more important because I have gone down a free, independent, safe New York City, which makes sense for us to do again. But we'll see what happens. Actually, it's friends with the feds. So we can't do that one. We definitely can't side with the syndicalists. So we got to be cozy with the constitutionalists. <clears throat> Cowboy struts in Manhattan. What a strange, strange man. Wow, that looks really sucky for him. The Reds still might win, but the PSA is doing really well. Of course, then again, can they peacefully reunify with the Radical Socialists and then Big Bell Haywood? That'd be kind of cool if you actually see that. I don't know how they're still holding on down here. Scattered Minimum Resistance, of course. Push against the Federalists. Organized Socialist Resistance. There's a lot of manpower still. Of course, they got a lot, too. Everyone's got a lot. Even Huey Long Dong, but that sucks how they're fighting right now. Well, actually, we got a lot of stability. Oh. It's not bad. Weekly stability gain plus point one. Plus, oh, okay. Make New York great again. Plus 50%. Holy crap. War profiteering. Nice. Look at that. Nice. The Belmont Island situation. Oh, whoa. Well, if you're going to go that, please go ahead. I'll have to leave some time. Let him leave some time. That's fine. Don't want to deal with that. We have enough eyes on us, as is already. New York Police Department Brigade, New York City Garrison. So, up next, I'm going to just probably use consequence for this stuff. If you want to read about this stuff, please go right ahead. Um, I've read it all before. So, Port Authority, found the New York International Airport, funds from the Federal Reserve, ties with real estate titans, which makes sense for us. Maintain trade networks as well. What to do with Wall Street? Um. I don't want to embrace a gray market, but if you want to read about that, please go right ahead. We'll strangle organized crime. We're probably not, we can't empower the union, so we're going to crack down unions, which I don't think I read before. Actually, I might have actually. So, if you want to read about that, please go right ahead. And it goes well. And then a self-sufficient New York City, Manhattan Project, 
friends in high places. Big miracles in the Big Apple. City of skyscrapers, of course. A city of metropolitan multiculturalism. Alright. And city under siege. Build new municipal air strips. Steel planes from the Air Force Base in New York. Central Park Aerodome. Expand the Brooklyn Naval Yard. The Pride of the Fleet Week. The New York Harbor Seawall. Necessary draft. Emergency fortifications, which makes sense. Militarization funded by the elite. That's kind of cool. Build up Fort Hamilton. Call for international aid. We can't... Uh, I don't really want to do militarize NYPD. Uh, but auxiliary forces, which I've done before, is the way we're going to go. That one first. As a mob asset or obstacle? I don't really want to use these guys, and we won't. So utilize the National Guard units. Pull exiles from upstate New York, or in upstate academies. The heart of the global arms trade. Uh, there you go. And then uh, raid upstate arsenals. And New York Army for New York. <clears throat> so I'm going to use Consequence for all this stuff. Um, so yeah. Let's see. It's 38 still. Grab that, even though we won't be able to use that. Armored trains, because he can as well. Uh, rally public support, war propaganda. More market liberalism? Sure, why not? All weather? Sure, why not? So after that, protecting New York City, but that was good ahead. Um, either overtures to Ottawa or the Reichs Pact. Now, Ottawa, or, you know, the Kingdom of Canada, social conservatives, well, these guys are social democrats. Oh, there's many can you state. If you want to read about repairing New York, uh, New York's cathedral, please go right ahead. Social Democrats are okay. We're market liberals, though. And social conservatives, we're pretty close to them, so we'll probably go with this group as well. Oh, reseeding Central Park. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. Yeah, it seems like this is the way we probably want to go. I mean, they're fairly market liberal as well. So let's go with Orchard to Ottawa. Or oh, actually, no, we need to go this way. So... FDR Jr. is not there. Local libations. This doesn't make sense why this is here. They're going to do this, please go right ahead. Pour one out for the lost ones we lost. That doesn't make any sense. We, we, we're we dry now. Um, so we'll definitely go here. It's not in a faction. So if you're going to read about over, just Ottawa, please go right ahead. But we will be going with Cozy with the Constitutionalists. We have no reservations against the fact that the Constitutional American Republic is a rightful American government. We stand firm with the new Declaration of Independence. Together we shall fight to preserve the traditional meaning of what it means to be an American. Give us liberty or give us death. So now we're just going to use, uh, what is it? Focus autocomplete. No, just get all these stuff done. I don't think there's anything else after this. I could be very wrong. I'm probably actually very wrong about that. Strangle organized crime. Yes, please. Crackdown on unions. Yes, please. Auxiliary force, levy guards, and all right. So there we go. So now we'll go to overtures with Ottawa, I, and we will intervene in the Civil War. So did I read this one? Oh, despite reservations over firing upon American brothers, there is no denying fate. We must intervene in the Second American Civil War in order to safeguard what it means to be an American. We march outside the city limits, armed and ready to not for conquest, but for retribution and revenge against the radical force that have tried to tear our beloved Union apart. They're going to cheat us. And there we go. So now they've gone to war with us. And, uh... Here. We got a research slot. Uh, no, let's not do that one. Let's go to this. Oh, let's go first. They don't attack us. But it is what it is. We've got plenty of army XP. Do some of that. And then land doctrine. Thank you, thank you. Oh, pretty, pretty, pretty nice. So, with that in mind, I'm totally not going to cheat right here at City Bike. Oh. You guys in the mob? Oh, Fate of Wall Street. So if you want to read this one, please go right ahead. Actually, I don't think I've read this one before. But the needs of the military continue to stream what the Big Apple can reasonably provide. A novel idea has been introduced in order to increase troop mobility while reducing the demand of motorized vehicles by our armed forces and the NYPD. Utilizing local manufacturers such as a newly founded and Brooklyn based Ross Galvanized Works to fulfill the order, the City Council has authorized the military usage of simple bikes and what is being called Operation City Bike. With these simple and cheap to build vehicles being used behind 
the front lines for logistics, supply rating, and troop transport, and the near the front line of specialized bicycle divisions functioning as a form of rapid attack troop, using tactics such as riding their bikes to get close to enemy positions quietly before unleashing their firepower on unsuspected flanks, or in recon and other support roles. These bikes shall hopefully provide, prove to be a valuable military asset while also relieving strain on our economy and industry. Though they may not be the most modern protective devices, let's not stop the troops from making modifications to their bikes already, such as adding makeshift armor plating or camouflage to the frames, and the military high command is assured that all of this is both a necessary action and a sound strategic move to aid in the warfare. They may not like the, they may not be the most protective things, but it sure beats walking. Alright, utilize the mob? If you like about that, please go ahead. As well as the fate of Wall Street. We're not gonna use mob. Burn away the last vestiges of the failed and guided system. Prove useful to us? Yes it will. And these guys, yes, 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 yes. Anything else here? Oh, we can do all make uh, New York self-sufficient, of course. We can join the Entente, but we're kind of okay. So, I just want to see if there's anything here <clears throat> if uh, we take these guys out. So, I'll see you in just a little bit. Loyal to the Constitutionalists. Fred Trump is faced with a hard decision to make. With the traitors in D.C. and Chicago, the only true American patriots left are the men in Atlanta. Aligning with the car, however, may be a rescue move. The stronghold in the Deep South and the lack of a powerful Navy means the mayor would be separated from his new allies regardless of the Trump admit. Regardless of this, though, Trump is committed to supporting his economic and political allies in the South and has defended his ties with the forest wing of the Constitutional American Republic, as well as encouraging sympathetic Federalists to desert their forces and seek shelter in the great northern stronghold of the Dixocrats. Furthermore, it's dedicated to the ever-expanding propaganda industrial machine in New York, supporting the cause of the Dixocrats in the South. With the National Guard rushing in to protect the outskirts of the city, the march to aid the rightful government of Atlanta has only just begun. Quick, to the border wall! Join the new America? Despite our initial mistrust, we stood side by side with the Dixocrat Constitutionalists in the Second American Civil War. Because look, they, they won totally fairly. Oh look, Red Alaska. Now after years of bloodshed, brother war, and barbarity, the war is finally over and one, of the, one America stands alone. The Constitutionalists have won the Second American Civil War without help, of course. Totally without help. And now they pressure us to enter the fold of their new union. But we spill just as much precious blood and securing our sovereignty before joining the ranks. And most New Yorkers detest the idea of throwing all, that all away. You must decide where New Testament lies. Side by side with the new union or within it. If I hard for independence, we shall remain as allies. We are Americans first and New Yorkers second. We shall join the new union. Hey, look. We won. Totally didn't cheat. Under Charles Lindbergh. Now I can continue with this campaign, but if I'm going to play as Charles Lindbergh, we're going to start literally during the Civil War. So, other than that, that's pretty much it for New York and Fred Trump. It's been a lot of fun. But I got other New York paths we got to try out. But if you enjoy the campaign, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I will see you tomorrow in another video and campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great rest of your day.